So you've got all your documents together and you're ready to file your taxes. Let's get it done quickly and easily and make sure you get your best return. Hey, I'm Austin from Sale Financial Ed and I help forward-thinking millennials get further in life faster with what they already have. In last week's video, I talked about compiling all the documents you need to file your taxes. And you can check that video up here. So in today's video, we're gonna cover how to actually file. Now before you start, you're gonna have to have three things. That is your SIN number, a copy of last year's tax return, and of course, all the documents you compiled to file your taxes. So with those three items in your hot little hands, the first thing you're gonna need to do is get logged into your CRA My Account. And if you don't have that, great, I'm gonna cover that now. If you do, there's a timestamp somewhere around here that's gonna direct you to the next steps. So at this point, we're gonna have to head over to the desk so we can hop on my laptop. So I'm set up here at my desk and right now I'm gonna get you set up with your CRA My Account. So first thing you're gonna do is go to canada.ca and it's like slash services slash taxes. Just search Canada taxes on Google and it'll take you to this page essentially. So once you're on the website, you're gonna scroll down here to My Account. And on My Account, if you're already using online banking, then what you can do, which is really great of the CRA, is use a sign-in partner. So if you're affiliated with any of the big banks, you can use your login credentials from your online banking and just use that to log into your CRA account because it's all looped in through your SIN number. Speaking of which, to get this set up, you're going to need your SIN number, last year's return total, your date of birth, and your postal code because those are the four pieces of information that they use to confirm your identity. So essentially what you would do is click on the bank. So for me, I use TD, so I would click on that one enter your login information, and then that's gonna take you to fill in those four identity prompts. Once that's done, there'll be a little bit more information you have to fill out, and then you have access to your CRA account. You'll only have partial access at the beginning, so you can see some of your history, but you have to enter a security code, which will be mailed to you in about a week or two, to get full access to your CRA account. If you want to expedite that process, then there's a phone number, which I'm gonna put right here, and that's a number that you can call that they'll give you the security access code so you can access it way quicker. And once you have that done, then you'll be able to autofill your information onto your tax filing software. Speaking of which, let's move on to talking about those because there's two different ones that I'm gonna to cover today, which is H&R Block and TurboTax. So here on H&R Block, you would set up an account just like you would as if you were setting up like a Gmail account or a Facebook profile, anything like that. You just click create account and then you're going to have to enter an email address and once you have that information sorted out, you'll get an email to verify that it's you and then you can start accessing the information. This will be exactly the same when you're setting up TurboTax. You just need to enter your email, get verified, and then you can start accessing your online tax filing software. So once you get logged on to the actual tax filing software, the first thing that's gonna happen is they're gonna ask you a ton of information about your identity. So do you live in which province? Have you changed your relationship status? What's your SIN number? And all these other kinds of things. In doing that, it helps define what your tax return is gonna look like. So the way the H&R Block tax filing software works is that you have these major headings here, which is kind of like the process that you follow to file your taxes. And then under each of those, you have these kind of subheadings, the about you, your family, and everything like that. So it kind of breaks it down level by level, and you can click through those to get to the part of your tax filing that you want to complete at that point. So getting started is all of the survey information they ask you. Then you click over to quick entry, which is going to be your income information. And here you can use the CRA autofill feature to make this process much quicker. However, if the information isn't readily available, then you can enter it manually, which is a pretty easy process. So you have a search guide here where you can search for the different form that you're looking for. So in most cases, it's gonna be a T4 or like a T2202A or the T5. And so let's say it's another T4 statement. Actually, here, we'll click on this one. So this is one that I already entered. So this is a pretty straightforward process filling out these forms. I found this example of one here. So let's say it's for sale financial education that you work for and that's located in Ontario, which is line 10. 
And then 14 is your employment income, so that's 35,000. You can see I entered that here. Your CPP contributions is 1559.285, so you'd enter that there, etc. It's pretty straightforward. You just enter line by line the information that you need. And once that's done, you can either add another T4 or you can continue on to the next process. So let's just press continue because I don't have anything else to add here. And then you would go to prepare. Now in prepare, this is where your credits and deductions are all available. So in most cases, there's your unused tuition amounts and student loans, which I've added the topic. And then you can just go across these subheadings here to find out which deductions or credits are available to you. So let's say you're able to get the Ontario Trillium benefits, which is the rent or the energy bill tax credit, then that's something you can click on. You, you have medical expenses or donations and gifts, all of this information you can click. And then as you continue through, then it will take you to a point where you start filling in the lines of the information based off all of the forms that you've collected to file your taxes like this. For the Ontario Trillium benefits, which is the rent and energy, then it asks me a couple questions and I just keep continuing on until I've finished this section. Once that's done, then you go to wrap up and it's probably going to ask you if you want to pay for extra help. I doubt you're gonna need it if you have a pretty simple tax form, but if you do, it's probably better to spend maybe 20 or $30 here rather than take it to the actual H&R block which takes up to 15% of your return. Just food for thought. And then after all of this, once you've continued through, then you would go to file, which turns into more information here. There's another sale and you just click through until you've actually filed it. Make sure you review everything. It will prompt you to review everything probably multiple times and that's gonna help you make sure that you've got all of your information correct. And this will also be around the time where it displays what your total is that you're either going to be paying or getting in return for your taxes. So that's it for H&R Block. Let's go to TurboTax. So TurboTax is similar in the way that it kind of prompts you forward throughout your software. You'll see here that there's this toolbar on the left side and essentially the My Info, that's all of the information that you're gonna have to give them to make sure that they kind of curate everything so it's provincially set for you. And then you can have the option to autofill your return, which I've talked about already. But if you can't auto return, then you just continue going down these steps here. I find these drop down menus a little overwhelming at times because there's so many options if you're not really sure what fits for you. So again, make sure you have all of your documents organized so you can just file what you need and not get overwhelmed or caught up with all of these other things and clicking through a bunch and wasting a bunch of your time. And if you're looking for some help for a way to get those files organized, then I've put a link down below for a little file that I put together to help you with that. So check that out if you need it. So we know that we'd have to enter T slips and it drops all of these down. So your T4 slip, which I showed you, that's something we can go through here and enter. Pretty straightforward. I've already fake entered one of these, but you just click add T4 for Austin or whatever your name is. You would go through here, add the employer's name, the province, and the line by line information that you have to fill in. And then you just click save and continue and on to the next one. So once you've finished filling in all of your income information, then you would go to your RRSPs if you've contributed anything there. If you haven't, just skip this section. And then you get to deductions. So if there's anything here, you have your moving profile. If you moved at all, there is a whole section for students right down here, including tuition fees, tuition carryover, scholarships, grants, bursaries, all of that great information. And then there's also a section here for medical expenses. So you would fill out your medical expense profile and that will help you get the information sorted out to benefit from by getting the deductions or tax credits for those expenses. All of the stuff you've completed before was all for the federal, so the Canadian government. And because you would have filled your information out initially, there are different tax credits and tax deductions for each province. If you're not really sure what you're eligible for, then you can always start with the get started. And once you've finished all your provincial information, then you just keep moving down. So you go to review, you can start with get started. And then again, I'm gonna warn you, they're probably gonna try and upsell their services to you. But if you are organized and you have all the information you need and you're keeping your receipts and everything, then you're probably not gonna need it. But if you feel like you absolutely do need some help, it's not a bad idea to get it. And after that, when it's all said and done, then you just click file, follow the prompts through that, and you are ready to go. You have sent your taxes away and you are done. So congratulations. But that is it. That's all you need to know for actually filing your taxes and getting your CRA account set up. 
So I hope this helps. I know it was very brief, but I just wanted to touch on it a bit to show you that it's actually not too hard. You just have the information, put it in line by line, add up a bit of stuff, and you're pretty much good to go. It does get a lot more complicated when you have all kinds of investments, capital gains, and all that, but likely you don't need to worry about that right now. So if this video brought you value, then I'm happy, and I hope it helps you get a great return this year, and I hope it helps cut some of the time you might have spent in past years trying to get your taxes all filed. And if so, then give this video a like, and how about a subscribe, because then it helps me know that this is great information that helps you with your financial. If you have any extra tax tips, then comment them below and let myself and others know, because we're always happy to learn from you. And with that, I say have a great day. Bye.